Homo erectus was one of the first species in our genus, and is thought to be our direct ancestor. While the species first evolved in Africa, it is the oldest hominid known to have roamed beyond the continent, and is the first to walk completely upright, control fire, use throwing spears, create language, and travel to remote islands. Homo erectus arose in Africa about 2 million years ago. These toolmakers, with relatively large brains migrated out of Africa and across Asia, crossing into Indonesia by land bridges about 1.3 million years ago, when savanna-like woodland covered much of the land. Later, sea levels rose, isolating these ancient people on the island. Meanwhile, in Africa and mainland Asia, Homo erectus disappeared by about 500,000 years ago. Erectus had nearly doubled the brain size of any previous hominin, walked habitually upright, were superb hunters, traveled the world, and sailed to ocean islands. Erectus was an imposing creature. Males stood almost six feet tall, much taller than modern humans until the last century. The brains of these early humans averaged around 950 cubic centimeters in volume, smaller than those of male Neanderthals and sapiens, but still within the range of modern female sapiens, and larger brain does not necessarily mean more intelligence. Evidence of their intelligence comes from their settlements, art, symbols, sailing ability, and tools. Erectus settlements are found throughout most of the old world. Oceans were never a barrier to the travels of Erectus. They traveled all over the world, and sailed across one of the strongest ocean currents on Earth. But the accomplishments of Homo erectus don't end there. It's also the earliest known hominin to have lived in the temperate environments of central Eurasia. The longevity, range and adaptability of Homo erectus make it the most successful hominin species in the fossil record. How did it all end for this mega-successful archaic human? When and where did the last Homo erectus make their last stand? These are the kind of questions that have long bedeviled archaeologists and paleoanthropologists. Homo erectus migrated across Asia within no more than a couple of hundred thousand years, remarkably fast, given that hominins apparently failed to migrate so far over millions of years of earlier evolution. They also survived multiple ice ages and other environmental catastrophes. To figure out when Erectus arrived on Java, Indonesia, scientists examined a site on the island, which has yielded over 100 hominin fossils. So many fossils have been found in the various layers of dirt at the site that it is possible to track the way the species changed with time, using the dates. The evidence shows that by 0.9 million years ago, individuals had developed larger brains and different shaped skulls. Also around this time, climate change led to a drastic fall in sea levels, exposing so much submerged land that Indonesia became connected to mainland Asia. This may have led to a flurry of new hominins into Indonesia, or driven a spurt of evolution among the local Homo erectus. It is unclear why it took Homo erectus so long to reach Indonesia, although if the species lacked seafaring skills that might go a ways towards explaining the delay. But incredibly, there is ample evidence that Erectus built seagoing watercraft. Sea travel is the only way to explain the evidence of Erectus tools found on the islands in Indonesia, Crete, and Socotra in the Arabian Sea, a completely isolated island more than 150 miles off the Horn of Africa. None of these islands were ever connected to the mainland, even during the lowest sea levels of the past two million years. However, some experts say that there is little evidence Homo erectus was a sophisticated seafarer. For example, one anthropologist says, quote, I don't accept that erectus had boats, I believe that a tsunami could have washed them out to remote islands on rafts of vegetation, unquote. But this seems like an archaic and stereotypical viewpoint. When modern humans ventured onto the island of Java, some 75,000 years ago, they found a rainforest-covered land teeming with life, but they weren't the first humans to call the island home. Our distant ancestor, Homo erectus, had traveled to Java when it was connected to the mainland via land bridges, and lived there for over one million years. In the 1930s, a team of Dutch explorers excavated a site by the Solo River in Java, and unearthed a rare treasure trove of fossils, including 12 partial skulls and two leg bones, identified as Homo erectus. To date the fossils, researchers applied five types of radiometric dating, including a method that provides both minimum and maximum dates to those animal fossils and the sediments around them. Researchers took a closer look at the sediment layers in which the remains were found. 
Crucially, there were layers of volcanic ash within the pile of sediments. The team used two methods to date the volcanic material, constraining the ages of the surrounding sediments. The scientists concluded that the bones were buried between 117,000 and 108,000 years ago. But the group of 12 Homo erectus suffered a mysterious mass death, and it's the last known appearance of Homo erectus in the archaeological record. The individual seemed to have perished in a mysterious accident, when they were swept downstream in a flood. Because the bones were all swept downstream at the same time, this suggests that all 12 Homo erectus individuals died simultaneously. They think the collection of remains from that mass death event was the result of a mudflow that can flow down the slope of a volcano when heavy rainfall occurs during a volcanic eruption. These violent events can sweep away anything in their path and occur frequently on volcanic islands. Thus, Homo erectus made their last stand on the island of Java about 100,000 years ago, long after they had gone extinct elsewhere in the world. The fossils also bookend the existence of a remarkably long-lived human species. With these new dates, the duration of Homo erectus occupation in Southeast Asia is nearly three times as long as our own species has been on the planet. The date of extinction, 100,000 years ago, also means that they would have missed out on witnessing the largest volcanic eruption in the past several million years, the Toba eruption on Sumatra Island 74,000 years ago. It seems curious that they went extinct just before this eruption, and just before modern humans allegedly arrived in the area. Maybe they did survive until 74,000 years ago, but the eruption pruned down their population, and they were not able to rebound and fend us off. But why did Homo erectus survive so long in Java? In the rest of the world, the species was most likely gone by 500,000 years ago. They were outcompeted by other human species, but Java's remote location allowed them to survive in relative isolation. In fact, Java was just about the most isolated place you could live, without being on a tiny island in the Pacific, or Australia. When modern humans arrived on Java, Homo erectus may have been extinct, but there is a suspiciously short 25,000-year gap in the timeline. There is evidence that modern humans were in Sumatra and Malaysia by at least 75,000 years ago. A warmer, wetter climate turned Java's open woodlands into dense rainforests about 100,000 years ago, and Homo erectus may have struggled to survive in such a transformed landscape. Homo erectus fossils were found with a collection of animal fossils that lived in an open woodland environment, similar to the environment in Africa where they evolved. The mass death event also coincides with a time when the world shifted from a glacial period to an interglacial period. Java, which is now mostly rainforest, was covered in woodlands during this cold spell. But around the time of the Homo erectus extinction, the island's environment started to get wetter and more humid because of the increasing temperatures, which allowed the rainforest to grow. Many experts believe that Homo erectus likely was unable to adapt to this new rainforest environment, but this seems odd, due to the fact that erectus lived for around 2 million years and occupied many different habitats across Africa and Eurasia. They may have encountered Homo sapiens around this time, which was very likely because Java and Sumatra were a single landmass at that time. Some researchers believe Homo erectus was too dependent on open savanna and too inflexible to adapt to life in a rainforest. Once this rainforest flora and fauna spread across Java, that was the end of erectus, which coincidentally is also when modern humans arrived. Anthropologists speculate that encroaching rainforest would have caused problems for the essentially open woodland fauna that Homo erectus liked to hunt. They might not have been able to find food sources they normally ate, or they might have been more vulnerable to predators, such as tigers. The Java site also included remains from animals that were more suited to woodland environments, including elephants, deer, and wild cattle that erectus hunted. Experts claim that the 25,000-year gap in the timeline indicates there was no overlap of Homo erectus with Homo sapiens in Java. But I'm not convinced, because Homo erectus fossil material from other Javanese sites has yet to be properly dated, and may be more recent than the current 100,000-year date given for their extinction. In fact, researchers came up with unexpectedly young ages between 53,000 and 27,000 years ago for Homo erectus in Java, using electron spin resonance and mass spectrometric dating in an earlier study. 
This raised the distinct possibility that modern humans overlapped with Homo erectus on the Indonesian island, but the dating has been questioned. Half a million years ago, on the banks of a river in Java, Homo erectus carved a deep zigzag into a freshwater clam shell. The shell is by far the oldest engraving ever found, challenging what we know about the origin of art and complex human thought. Researchers discovered engravings on a shell that date to between 540,000 and 430,000 years ago. The ancient artwork is the oldest known geometric carving ever found. These ancient humans not only ate freshwater shellfish, but engraved the shells. The shell was likely used as a knife for cutting or scraping. The artist was right-handed, used a shark's tooth to cut the markings, and had a remarkably steady and strong hand. Indeed, Erector seems to have been a skilled artist, as exemplified in a 250,000-year-old Venus figurine from Israel. In addition, there is a remarkably beautiful quartzite hand axe, called Excalibur, used in a burial rite in Spain 350,000 years ago. The other thing about these shellfish, is that they are abundantly present, easy to collect and very nutritious, so this would imply that Erectus had a varied diet, and that life was not too tough for Homo erectus 500,000 years ago. As for the shark's teeth, only two sharks are known from the region, the Ganges shark and the sand tiger shark. It is possible that Homo erectus hunted sharks for their meat. If they were hunting sharks, this would mean that they had sophisticated seafaring and fishing technology, or maybe they found the shark teeth on the beach. Elephants, rhinos and tigers once roamed the islands of the Philippines and Indonesia, so when it comes to ocean crossings, we see that many species somehow managed to make the trek without boats. Maybe Erectus was just a very good swimmer, and very determined. However, there is no denying that Homo Erectus left an impressive legacy. We used to think of human evolution as a progression, with a straight line leading from primitive apes to Homo sapiens. This is embodied in the old March of Progress illustration, where a stooping chimp-like creature gradually morphs into Homo sapiens, the apex of evolution.